Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 158. I'm your host, James Shotwell, and I hope you're doing well. If the audio is a little strange right now, that's because I'm coming to you from Philadelphia's International Airport after a long but enjoyable weekend at Lancaster's Launch Music Conference. If you've never been to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, picture the Austin, Texas of Pennsylvania, which might be a little hard, especially if you've never been to Austin, but it's just this kind of amazing, very old, arts-heavy community that really embraces talented people at every level of the industry. And I've spent the last few days speaking on conferences and talking with musicians about their careers and how to navigate this crazy business called music. But today, I'm bringing you something kind of special. While I was there, I spoke on a panel called Hidden Figures, and one of my co-panelists was Mr. Jason Rodriguez, the director of urban editorial content for Vivo, which many of you may know as being part of the YouTube community. Vivo is a video platform, and when I say editorial, you're probably wondering, what does that really mean in the world of video? Because any descriptions you might see for YouTube videos are usually one or two sentences. It's not a lot of writing, but we're going to get into that today. Jason gave me 20, 25 minutes of his time to talk about his career in music, how it came to be. He has several decades of experience, mostly in writing about urban and hip hop music. And then he talks about his current role at Vivo, how it's evolving, and things like what separates a video documentary from a profile piece that you might read in a magazine. There's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of challenges. And we're going to talk about how those challenges are changing as the industry evolves. This is a conversation that I've been wanting to have for a while because as much as we do a really good job of covering rock and metal and alternative and even sometimes country music, we haven't done a lot of urban and hip-hop coverage on the show. But today that changes thanks to Mr. Jason Rodriguez. And I hope you look him up online. I hope you read his work because he's a very talented person in this industry and somebody that we should all know and aspire to be like. Before I get there, I do want to tell you one quick thing, which is that this episode of Inside Music and all episodes of Inside Music are brought to you by Holix, the music industry's leading digital promotional distribution platform and what that means is that Holix works with artists at every level of the industry as well as managers record labels and publicists to share new and unreleased music without fear of piracy to learn how they do that and gain access to a free 30-day trial visit holix.com that's h-a-u-l-i-x.com you should also be following them on twitter it's at holix again h-a-u-l-i-x find us you'll learn more about the show and everything that's going on and if you want even more information about the music industry and how you can succeed in it i hope that you can go to youtube and search either inside music podcast or music biz 101 we host a video series that breaks down what you can learn from people like beyonce the main former guest heart attack man and many other talented people so please seek out all that but right now i just want you to sit back relax and enjoy this conversation with mr jason rodriguez Thank you for taking the time to chat with me before you get out of here. You said you're going to go back to New York today? I do, yeah. I have to uh, cover the uh, Webster Hall's uh, reopening. The Jay-Z uh, show the, Jay-Z, uh, the hottest ticket it seems yes, like in yeah, the yeah, Northeast uh, right now? Besides uh, two. So, yeah, <laughs> so. Well, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Like, and this year I was going to stay you know, overnight and kind of really uh, in bed here, but... Writer's right. So, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a fun thing to cover, though. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's give me like the real quick uh, origin story for your career. Like, where did you? When did you start? How did you get started? Yeah, I um, so you know uh, uh, had my fell in love with hip hop moment uh, yeah. watching Young TV raps. Uh, okay, saw a Big Daddy okay. Kane video. He was very famous for kind of having very stylized uh, yeah. eyebrows. Love uh, that. Um, saw it was amazing. Transfixed. He was my new superhero. Okay. And, did you um, try to do the eyebrow yourself? I, I did not. I did okay. not. Yeah. Um, I've had that thought sometimes, and you see those, and you're always like, I don't think I can pull it yeah, off. But it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think luckily I had a uh, a good kind of inner dialogue that said, 
Don't. That's a line. We <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, with Mesmerizer Hip Hop, then you know, became the hip hop kid, which is a unique thing because uh, with social media, it's like you can connect with a bunch of different hip hop kids, so you're mm-hmm. not just the one. Yeah. Um, but I was, you know, the one obsessive uh, hip hop kid, spending all my money on CDs. Uh, buying the source and vibe and double XL and you know just being a young kid with magazine subscriptions which mm-hmm. was like bizarre. <laughs> was yeah, like, yeah. The first adult did, my, did my mail come? Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, so you know went went to college. Um, I'm from Delaware. I'm actually from like uh, 30 minutes outside of here in Lancaster right now. And um, Delaware is a banking state. So I went to college for uh, you know business management kind of uh, major quickly realized this is not what I want to do yeah, yeah. and switch to communications because like a broad enough yeah. uh, a field of study and uh, ultimately met a girlfriend in college who she was from New York okay. and so the idea of some of the things that were my dreams were mm-hmm. common to her because it was touchable there yeah, yeah and so she was like you know very encouraging uh, and kind of pointed me in direction and really got me uh, you know, off my horse and into like following uh, my dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, from there, you know, started writing about hip hop for the student uh, newspaper. Uh, graduated, started connecting with like alum who were already in New York. Uh, Chuck Creekman was a, a huge mentor of mine. Uh, Bill Wordy, who uh, uh, runs the Bandier program, him and Chuck uh, were classmates. Um, and so as Bill kind of was like the Rolling Stone Billboard guy, Chuck was the uh, source BET guy. Made inroads with him. Moved to New York for grad school for NYU uh, magazine journalism and you know, was freelancing for hip hop websites. Ended up interning uh, for Vibe magazine and that was my professional uh, entryway. And mm-hmm. then from there, you know, Vibe, MTV, Double XL, a couple different startups, uh, documentary crew or two, and now uh, currently at Vivo. Yeah. So when did you start at Vivo? Uh, about two and a half years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was that. Was that a this is something I always am curious about. Especially really people that have done like the journalism circuit. Was this a apply for the position, or was it like a, a bunch of hurdles, or did they come to you? Like, how did you get the job? No, so I, um, you know, I like I, I wanted to have a different experience um, mm-hmm. in my career. So it's like I, I feel like I did really good work at MTV, and I feel like I did really good work at Double XL. But those were pillars, and they they were made before I got there. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to go at a place where I could really contribute to what they did. Kind of sculpt what it is. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's easy to, like, romanticize uh, MTV if you're a certain age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I remember, like, reading this MTV book, and I was like, you know, I want to have some quotes like this and, and, and kind of be in the, uh, um, where the cement is wet still. Yeah. And so um, Diddy, uh, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, uh, launched a music network called Revolt. Yep. Had a lot of former MTV folks, and you know we all went there and sort of immediately leveled up uh, mm-hmm. in terms of positions that we took on there. Um, so I went there. I was the editorial director, overseeing our coverage uh, for online, social, and on air. And the title, when I just described, sounds awesome, yeah. um, but the experience didn't necessarily match that. I, I think a little bit of an identity crisis. Incredibly hard to launch a network channel and yeah. also play by. Uh, the rules of uh, governance um, mm-hmm. in a culture that's just very fast and yeah. um, hyper-consuming. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a challenge. It wasn't necessarily the experience uh, what I wanted it to be, but that so gave I me kind of clarity of what I wanted like... to do. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, I, you know, I realized, like, you know, I've, I've, I've written a ton I've worked at magazines, I've worked at dot coms, and you know, I, I was, there was video stories that I wanted to tell. So yeah. before I got, uh, I mean, I got fired. Uh, I got they eliminated my position. Um, so um, I've reached a point where you know, I was kind of behaving more like an adult than, yeah. than I ever had in my career. Which uh, you know, in this industry, can be really easy to pay attention to your CD collection and not mm-hmm. your 401k. And so, <laughs> All the time. Um, What's retirement funds? Yeah, 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 so, you know, I got to the point where it's like, you know, I had a good savings um, and I didn't necessarily have to lose a job and find one right away, which I, that had been my prior experience in yeah. my career. And so, um, you know, I kind of, uh, I thought, what, what did I want to do? Mm-hmm. I wanted a job as a video producer. I wanted to be paid like I managed a team, but without having to manage a team. <laughs> 
Yes. And, um, you know, and that, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to do. So, you know, I set aside, like, doing some freelancing. Um, unfortunately, it's, easy, it's better money to write bios than to write. It is. Um, so I was on the bio circuit more than I was uh, freelancing. And um, one of my old uh, co-workers from MTV, he had moved over to Vivo. And, you know, I was just picking, he's a smart guy, so I was just picking his brain. And, you know, he was like, maybe I might have something for you. We ended up speaking over like a two, maybe three month span. Um, and I picked up like a consulting gig with MTV2 in, in the midst. So like, you know, it wasn't necessarily uh, um, in this race for money, but I knew I was getting money for a short period of time. It's kind yeah, of like yeah. two month kind of contract thing. And, um, you know, the more we talked about it, the more he allowed me to kind of shape my role and mm-hmm. what I wanted to do. And so then, you know, he kind of got formally hired at Vivo we spoke a lot. I, you know, I was helping him build his team out, and then eventually, like, he gave me a job description, which was mm-hmm. what we were talking about. Exactly. So, ended up over there, and um, so yeah, so it was a bit of um, that that who you know, <laughs> but also knowing what you want to do, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't always happen no. uh, that way. But I was fortunate in, in this moment; it, it, it kind of did. Are you? A, I mean, are you even a music writer if you haven't had a job just disappear from underneath you? Yes, at some point, yeah. Right? I, I tell people you're not you're not a true journalist until you've been laid off. Yeah, uh, once. I, yeah. Or in my, I worked at a startup once where they just ran out of funding at one point, and yeah. you like furloughed, and you have to like you learn what that term means. You're like, oh, you just you can just not pay me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing. All right. That's yeah, it's, cool. it's, it's it's pretty incredible the, the inner <laughs> machinations of business that you learn as a writer. What is um. What is the biggest difference, I guess, from, I guess, traditional storytelling and journalism and, like, what you do now doing video storytelling? Like, what is the biggest challenge or difference between those two things? Yeah, I, um, it, it's interesting. I, some of the tenets, I think, are still the same. Like, I, I, I look at some, like, doc shorts that I see that other um, outlets do, and sometimes I think, like, if you wrote that, um, you would, like, there'd just be so much red um, mm-hmm. in it. And so I think sometimes people... Um, and, and it's something that I was saying a lot in, in, in the, the, the conference that we're at. Like, like, I think sometimes people forget their own instincts as a consumer mm-hmm. uh, when they're making things as a professional. Yeah. And so sometimes you'll see stories that are just very linear and in chronological order, mm-hmm. which, as you know, if we're writing something, that's not how we would write it. Yeah, right? yeah. We wouldn't start from birth <laughs> and then go to when this album dropped. Exactly. Um, and, you know, you'll see pieces like that. And and so for, for, for me, that, that core of what I do as a producer or director of a piece like it's still as a writer and Mm -hmm. right like what's my lead how am I introducing this piece what's my transition to get to that back history graph right those things still happen but you have to then find what those devices are right because um, two things that make it really different is uh, one you the interview style is just completely different Um, less of a conversation you have to really find times to be quiet Mm -hmm. to keep your audio clean and you have to, I think sometimes writers will be maybe casual with their prep because they're like, I want to listen. It'll come out. I want to have a conversation. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, it's like, I can always get a phoner later mm-hmm. to fill in what I need where it's like, I can't get them on camera later. Yeah. So I have to get everything that I need now. It has to be like prompt style. Too. Exactly. And then the other thing is just figuring out what your device is that you're going to use for transitions, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so now rather than me writing this uh, transition sentence, um, I need B-roll that's going to get me from one scene of the story uh, yeah, yeah. into the next. So, you know, it's b- being able to translate that makes it different. But there's a core of it that I think, uh, in terms of constructing the narrative, that's uh, the same. Do you feel like you're just creating mini-movies? Is that how you try to look at it? Because I feel like some sites, like, like a noisy music docs, they always feel like they're trying to make a five-minute film. Yeah. And I'm like, I remember they did one on Lil Xan where I was like, damn, how much time did you guys spend sitting around with this guy to have all this yeah. footage? You know? you know what's so funny? I want to say no so I don't sound um, pretentious. So pretentious. Yeah. <laughs> but then I think about the last piece I did with like Pusha T. Um, I took him to Staten Island um, to talk about Wu-Tang because he mm-hmm. had this uh, Project Daytona that was heavily influenced by one of the members. <laughs> and... Um, I mean, there was, like, portraiture and some things that I did in there that were very, like, Um, Mm -hmm. film-like. In retrospect, I was really just pleasing me. Um, (laughs) I feel like if you get that much time in Pusha T, though, you got to, like, make make it count every second. Yeah, but, you know, it's like you're, 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 uh, you know, you're trying to, again, same tenets of storytelling, opening, uh, rising action, conclusion, and, you know, sometimes it does lend itself. They're fine. Uh, Sometimes it does lend itself to... um, 
things that are you know overly cinematic. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't I don't set aside to doing that. Yeah, like noisy and vice. Sometimes it's like we get it, guys. We got it. Yeah, you you have access. Yes, that's yes. cool. Yeah, there's yeah. some resources here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And I, you want me to never have to read another article yeah. about this artist ever again? I got it. It's cool. It's cool. Just one time and done. Yeah. Um, do you speaking of that for example, when you're building pieces, do you look at it as this is my one chance to tell this story? Or are you trying to bug? Like, this is the first time we do this, and if this keeps going, we're going to have a chapter two. Do you try to think of it that way? Is, is it this is my one shot, or is it I'm you know, building that narrative? No, I mean, I, in general, I mean, I, um, I, I like to tell stories with a lot of heart. Um, and to try to convince an artist or, or create this uh, storyline that uh, can feed into an understanding of their project. And so sometimes directly speaking about the project doesn't get me to that destination. Yeah. So, you know, I like to have a lot of uh, heart uh, with things. And with that, it's it's really capturing who you are at that moment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, you made a good point of, uh, uh, talking about an album. I actually thought it was really excellent. That second album's the On the Road album yeah. because that's what happened. What the first album is, is your, yeah. your life album, right? Yeah. And... Um, so it's it, you know it's a moment of time. So I, I I like to go into stories with this idea like if I capture this moment in time correctly, the story would only get better with age. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sort of my my, my my angle way every time I <laughs> uh, uh, go into a project. Do you have anything you're, you've worked on recently that is out yet that you can tell me about? Like what you? No, well it's so I'll do in all transparency. My posi- my role has actually just changed recently. Okay, so and what so, are you doing? And that's part of the cha- the evolving role okay. of like journalism. So it's like I was I was a producer at Vivo. And now I'm an editorial director. Okay. Um, what does that mean for a place that doesn't have like yeah. written words, right? So place that has like two sentence descriptions. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now it's like uh, doing some of those two sentence descriptions, <laughs> and also uh, for the urban uh, landscape, like you know, making sure we're positioning artists uh, in our correct um, tentpole programs. That we yeah, have. is, is, so, is there a curation aspect to it? This is, it's, it's probably like curation meets like ambassadorship. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a difference, kind of like a top line uh, job. Um, uh, not, nothing I applied for. I think, you know, part of it's like change in business as yeah, yeah. well. Like we're all in on Vivo, now, or on YouTube now rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to have our own independent player um, and now we 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 have this strategy. We're doing Vivo everywhere, but we're YouTube first. Mm-hmm. And so with that, um, you know, it provides uh, new strategy opportunities, and then it changes some uh, opportunities as well. So uh, for me, hip hop's our biggest yeah. genre, and so you know, I've been asked to kind of do this role um, uh, to kind of really tap into hip hop. So I, I think some of it on a granular level is rather than spend uh, six weeks or two months with Pusha T doing yeah. just one piece. Part of my job is also writing treatments uh, mm-hmm. and scaling to our content team. So mm-hmm. maybe I can write uh, four treatments, and in that same period of time, we can get two of them or mm-hmm. three of them. Um, there you go. And so uh, there's been treatments that I've wrote recently that haven't come out yet. But, <laughs> there you um, go. Unfortunately, I can't share. That. All right. Well, let me ask you this because you're somebody that also watches a ton of music videos. Yes. When it comes to when it comes to developing a hip hop artist, do you want to see a narrative driven video, or do you just want to see? Me and my me and my crew somewhere doing something cool. Like, what do you think makes a better first impression hip hop video? Uh, it's a good, it's funny that last tag you put there really makes it good yeah. with a first impression. Um, <laughs> no, I mean it's it's it, it, execution is just yeah. the core construct, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, if you have something where it's just. Uh, you in front of the house you grew up with and the people you grew up with, like, you know... That can be great. That can be great, right? And, and you know, people say, like, if it's shot well. And what we mean by shot well is, like, you know, there's good lighting, there's some interesting camera movements, um, and, uh, you know, the, the framing is done nice, and, and there's good sound quality. And these are things that you don't need a professional cinematographer to do. Yeah. You know, it, excuse me, it may not be your best friend who yeah. just has a camera. <laughs> Maybe you can tap into your local uh, college and there's a kid who wants the same opportunity you want and, you know, you guys are each other's muse for this short moment in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I, but I think that can work as well as, uh, you know, a, so, so this, like, narrative construct where it's creating either a complimenting storyline or something that's just, I thought this song was about this, but you made this music video that's completely not adjacent to what I thought it uh, to be. So <laughs> I, it, it's, I don't want to feel like I'm wiggling out of it, but I, I, I really do think it's just good execution 
uh, is, is just yeah. tantamount. I think you're right because I did see a, I saw this hilarious meme the other day that was some some kid performing. It was like way too theatric, and someone the comment with it was just like, "What happened to just rapping in cars? Yeah, like what happened to just like being in a car driving through your city rapping? Yeah. Like why do we got to do exactly. all of this? Yeah. And I feel like that is true because I sometimes I feel like I want a narrative, but then you see a great like, especially if your hometown isn't showcased. Like if you live anywhere other than Atlanta and you're just showing me what's like your life is like, I'm like, this is what I want because now yeah. I know the story. And that becomes your introduction. Still. Yeah, I'd yeah. still rather that than like just girls somewhere like you. Yeah. you know. But you know, if you make the song and it works well, it's like, yeah, it works right, right. You it's know, true. This, yeah, this yeah. makes me feel like the environment I should be in. <laughs> For this visual tutorial. Now, with that, let's have one more hip hop kind of question because this is something I like to talk about a lot. When it comes to hip hop shows, do you do you prefer an artist that like a Kevin Gates where you're going to see the whole song? He's into twelve songs in full, or do you want to see? Do you like? Uh, do you prefer when they're just like, I'm going to give you like a verse and a half? Yeah, thirty-seven songs. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's interesting. Um, I just saw. I mean, as an example, I just because I talked about this on another episode of the show. Mm-hmm. I just saw. Uh, I just saw the little baby tour. Okay. Like, little baby, you get the whole. You get a whole Everything, song. He's going to yeah. like twenty-four whole songs. <laughs> Blue face had 15 minutes, and we you got Tatiana and like yeah. 13. He danced a little, right, yeah, yeah, and yeah, City yeah. Girls was like somewhere in the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little bit of everything. No, it's funny. I um I read that uh, op ed. I forget who wrote it recently uh, in Billboard, where it was like kind of directing like uh, veteran acts to do your, like just do three new songs and just yeah. all catalog. That's all we yeah. want to hear. Um, and so you know, really got me thinking about like shows and the experience that that, that I want to uh, give. And, you know, I mean, I think yeah. it's. I think it's like uh, playing with the metabolism of the audience, mm-hmm. right? Like the, you know your winners and giving that in full. Yeah. Other songs, just kind of giving the the, the verse. I, I think for hip hop, what's, what's interesting, you know, there's a lot of songs that you may get that are guided by like the singing hook, mm-hmm. and that singer's not with you. Yeah. Uh, and you know, figuring out creative ways to like what to do with that, right? Mm-hmm. Like is 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 it a slower tempoed song that has a singing hook where instead I can substitute like uh, uh, telling you the backstory uh, mm-hmm. of, of this song and experience yeah, yeah. doing that hook or maybe I just end it after that one verse uh, mm-hmm. but, I, but I think it's doing that um, you know and like in writer parlance like right you follow the long sentence with the short sentence right <laughs> and so I, you know I think so mixing it up of that and keeping the audience on their heels and I, and I think that especially if you're a new artist even if you're a veteran artist, you're you're instructing your audience to like this song is important. That's why I'm giving you the full experience. Mm-hmm. Um, this song right here can be extracted anywhere because it's a high energy joint. I could have yeah. did the second verse or the first verse. <laughs> I just need to do something to get into the hook. We're together mm-hmm. now. I got this energy right. Let me talk to you for a moment. Um, and, you know, I I, I, I just was speaking to a guy uh, out here at the conference that we're at, and you know, he mentioned he was like, "My music is it. I got it." And so then I'm like, "Well, how's your show?" And he's like. You know, I could work on that. It was like, you don't got it, right? There's other things, but it's, you know, it's thinking about, like, how do you translate that aspect of your music into your show? And, you know, I, I personally enjoy something that's, um, um, you know, not just so, like, uh, A, B, C, uh, yeah. but there's some, some mix. You, you're keeping us on our toes uh, because you're communicating um, kind of this alternate idea to us yeah uh, no I feel like I, I get what you're saying and, and I think that's right plus in hip hop they do have the advantage that like if you have a great verse on a song that's not yours you can just be like I'm going to give you that verse yeah. you want to hear that verse because it's amazing yeah. I'm going to drop that and that'll be it that's all I'm going to give you yeah. um but I think you're right. It's funny because I feel like with rock bands a lot, like if they have a really great song, because people feel like that proves them. But in hip hop, it is like, like Blueface is a great example. Like we all like Tatiana, yeah. and now it's like, so what are you gonna do next? And yeah. If you're on tour, then that live show better like give us that next thing. Yeah. So yeah. We're like we're ready for the next single. And yeah. He up. has to. He has to curate himself. Yeah. Uh, he has to like sense. follow it up, and like he does have like that West Coast verse now. We're like okay, yeah. so now we have, now we have the West Coast yeah, verse. Yeah, yeah. But there's that is but I guess and in a way that's like the catch twenty two of the genre is you can have that one song and it can be like well we'll put you on the road. Now because there's money. Yeah, no hip hop, hip the the the, the metabolism of hip hop moves so fast, um, yeah. and there's so much music. I I, I mean, what I do now is in my life is really not that different than what I did 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. Right, like just listening to a ton of rap and a ton of bas- watching a ton of basketball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the life, basically. Yeah, <laughs> but, but there's there's I mean there's so much uh, rap to listen to because uh, you know late it's as things have sort of gotten. Um, um, what's the what's the, I guess you know reconfigured around the idea of streaming, right? Because mm-hmm. hip hop op- op- operated in kind of this like bifurcated 
um, way where it's like, you know, what's above the line is like major label system. But then there's this underground economy of mixtapes. The mixtape economy. Um, that are... Which I sometimes miss. I, I do too. And yeah. you know, it's kind of like fluent, non-linear kind of experience. Um, but you know, now everything is kind of being streamlined into streaming. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it just it speed things up like exponentially and yeah. to your point like you know one song and it's like you know we talk about Blueface and City Girls both great acts but you know we talk about them in, in ways that I guess five years ago we talk about like Big Sean after mm-hmm. he dropped a really great album yeah, um, yeah. Uh, because there's just opportunities and in, in, in streaming is creating uh, different lines of revenue for labels and labels are getting I guess a good way of saying it a positive way is like creative with the contracts and, and what they're <laughs> doing and then you know booking agents are almost competing with A&Rs and who they can snatch up first and so you know things are happening faster and sooner and and some of the pomp and circumstance around Blueface is what we would like regal like an artist having their moment yeah yeah um, and he's hardly having like his moment he's yeah. having a moment yeah it's just and, you know, different ways to think about it yeah like, hopefully you know he can kind of bundle that up and then, <laughs> and, 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 then and then have that but yeah, it's interesting, and, and and you know, it's it's part like you see like stuff with Live Nation is doing with and they're crafting all these different sort of festivals and things that kind of create opportunities where like Blueface can do like a, a, a mini run on like a radio destination and markets that his manager can book himself. He'll open a short run for like a G Easy or whoever he's on tour right now, and then you know Live Nation will have like Broccoli Fest here in yeah, DC yeah. and. Uh, you know this new festival they curated and created with uh, 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 somebody in Atlanta and, yeah. and you know uh, J. Cole has his personal one that they've invested in Pharrell has his now the Lyrical Lemonade so, one and yeah. so on and so forth yeah, yeah. exactly so it's 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 it's, it's kind of uh, I don't want to say kind of crazy it's it's um, it's absolutely crazy <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's bonkers but it's it's yeah it's this way where it's like yeah man this one song is really going to get a lot of uh, life <laughs> yeah, I especially in your position. What do you think? What would you say you think is the uh, like the shelf life of like a, a hot single these days, especially in the hip hop marketplace? Like, what do you? How long do you? How long can you actually ride that for these yeah. days? Yeah, um, I, I feel like it's like twelve weeks, like max. Two, two, that's almost unanswerable. Right? It, like, it depends on how soon it becomes a meme. Also, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, like the little Nas song. It, 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 depend, like, yeah, you, it depends like the, the like uh, attachments. <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. That, like, how, yeah. How does get, the community kind of treat the single? Exactly. Yeah, um, and all and like you know how it breaks, right? Does, does mm-hmm. it break like audio first and then like? A video can extend it the very like traditional way it used to yeah, be, yeah. Um, or like you know, it, it was it was it under the seams kind of like uh, um, old country town ro- yeah. uh, road like in uh, on TikTok and then it kind of explodes. Whereas we as old adults are like, what? What, what, what yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah. How does this work? Uh, that's funny <laughs> on, the, on the panel when we said TikTok and somebody's like, wait, what? Does yeah, Mike was like, what is TikTok? <laughs> yeah, and he was like, so serious. I thought he was joking. I was <laughs> like, I, I was like, oh man, we don't have time for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's totally, uh, yeah. No, because 12, 12 weeks is such a, like, traditional cycle, right? It, it, it feels cycle, like it. But, like, Tatiana's... It's been going. It's it, been going. And, and and Tatiana's not even, like, top-tier smash hit. No. Like, but it's, it's had... There is, like, a uh, weird like, wave you can ride underneath that. Where it's yeah, like, I think so, too. Especially if you're creative with, like, the ways you can kind of, like, zig and zag mm-hmm. um, and, and do, like, you know... You gotta embrace the internet making it its own. Like, yeah. Tatiana's a good example. Exactly, of like, yeah. You lean into the memes. Lean into it. <laughs> a remix happens. You support the remix, but then the remix shelf life gets, like, uh, yeah. really short. But then, like, you go back to the original and you're still working it. Or you have um, two remixes. Like, I know yeah. Lil Nas has a exactly. Young Thug version yeah. of that song coming. Exactly. And we'll be and like... you tease it, and you tease it, and yeah, you tease yeah. it. I don't know. I, I guess it will... Uh, 12 is probably a good average... Uh, I don't know. You know, sometimes I think you get to like sixteen. Yeah. Right. Like you get like a quarter per quarter. One one big song. Yeah, yeah. Own, own a quarter. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's, it's that you essentially own a quarter because then the, yeah. then, then um, the game is going to then find a way to cycle you out because mm-hmm. another artist mm-hmm. is going to emerge because labels are watching and you know they're trying to not get absorbed into somebody else's shine. But then at a certain point, it's like all right, new quarter. New financial sheet. We got to get popping. Here's this <laughs> big artist song. This is a comedy. I was like, oh yeah, yeah that's always great. But I would love this. Yeah, now I'm over here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's good. I think I got enough to make it. <laughs>